Um, probably uh, the matchups have been kind of tricky uh, recently. It'll depend on a lot of like how they're playing or if they're um, like if they're really respecting like bold enough or not. Uh, most probably players will side out talks against Rogue, so um, it's actually good to leave in the bolts to, to kill their mystics like as soon as they play them versus like overloading on tumble magnets and being like well, largely reactive. Makes makes sense. The uh, yeah, the sword play doesn't become as relevant post board, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You get to react in different ways. So yeah. you don't necessarily need to play like card advantage game anymore. Yeah. So uh, here we have AJ Soccer against Christian Valenti. Both are uh, armed with Fob Blade. They just finished their first game. Okay. So uh, they're going on to game two here. Yeah, it was interesting. I was calling Christian. Uh, I was having flashbacks to playing against vampires on the top eight. When I played against him, he was playing vampires in the first round of the top eight in uh, Kansas City. <laughs> he was playing uh, a lot of black vampires. Yeah, yeah. I believe the uh, list that Tom Ross had given him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a pretty sweet deck. But, uh, I, got, I got pretty lucky against him. Um, Edgar Flores just yelled over that he has uh, won his match, which puts him into the top four of this event. Now again, this uh, this is a continuation of uh, one of the sickest runs, actually easily the sickest run ever on the Star City Games <laughs> Open Series. Uh, Edgar now has played in eight Star City Games Standard Opens this year, and he has top eight in six of them. That's pretty insane. Um, including a championship. So, yeah. That's pretty impressive. He yeah. also he plays strange lists. You know, he doesn't play Gideon's instead. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't yeah, play Giant Judgments. He only plays twenty four lands. He likes to use his tech edges really aggressively and play that go low curve, and it works really well. Yeah, I've seen him play only a couple of times, but uh, he seems pretty sick from what I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> Some nice table banter here between AJ Soccer and uh, Christian Valenti. I'm sure they're good friends. Again, Christian is pretty lighthearted in general. Yeah, I've yeah. played against him a few times, and uh, he always seems to be having a good time. Oh, definitely. He's a pretty fun guy. Like, you can have two Force of Wills in your opening hand, and he can be playing Belcher. He just has like a massive smile on his face. <laughs> Yeah, I guess uh, this is his weapon of choice now in Legacy, huh? Yeah, he uh, he has been playing Belcher for years. He's yeah. been the biggest proponent of that, <laughs> like anybody. It's like the next set of colors. Classic battle. Uh, <laughs> normally, we see the Mystic win on this battle. Yeah. Uh, turn two Stoneforge Mystic is uh, equivalent to the current standard format. What uh, Turn two Bitter Blossom was about a year and a half ago, two years ago. One of the things I see a lot in this matchup, like Hawk versus Mystic, is um, the Hawk players will often be. Uh, Pretty care careful not to get hit by sword when you can't actually get afford to get hit by sword since you've got like the hawk card advantage and just like discarding hawks is like way better than like jump blocking the hawk. So yeah, it's kind of too bad. Yeah. Little Jace is pretty good there. Yeah. He's probably just gonna crack at the chase and uh, he's passed through in my only coven. Yeah. Oh. oh, he's a nice stoneforge. It's probably ready to play it out. Your opponent's a plane talker on the board. Yeah. You kind of want them to uh, sort of point pressure now. Yeah, he also doesn't like normally. You don't do that because you're afraid of your opponent casting a Jace on four, but right. his opponent already has a small Jace in play, so it's something he doesn't need to worry yeah. about anymore. That's actually not true. His opponent can just take it down and play a big Jace if he wants. Oh, that's true. Mortar Pod is a pretty cool innovation that they've had uh, 
probably decks haven't really uh, you know gone away at all, but they've had these tiny tweaks over time, mm. and we've seen uh, you know more and more cards like coming in and getting played. And uh, Mortar Pod is this card that kind of seemed like a fringe card you know, in some people's decks, not other people's decks. Sometimes people have the sideboard, and uh, as more time went on, it seemed like almost everybody had it in their main deck. Yeah, I remember after Paris, everybody was pretty down on it, but then uh, some people were playing it at DC, and it really showed up uh, in force in uh, Dallas. Yeah, it just became like a necessary tool people had to have if they ever wanted to people those cover decks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so who do you think has the advantage right here? Um, I have to go with Christian here with, with, with the act of Jace. Yeah, yeah he's, he's also really important. He's also going to play fourth land for AJ. Yeah. I keep one must think in a while. Yeah, every other match is Yeah. It's got some downtown that we'd love to have you. But you can't say anything. We're going to be closing down the room. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you can is uh, uh, going ahead and uh, casting his mortar pod. So please wrap up your games and move towards the exit. Uh, again, we'll we have our results eight, of the other eight, matches in the top eight. Oren Beasley, who's here with us now, doing commentary. He won his match over Ryan Herber, Thomas Cole, who's playing Black Red Vampires. Uh, Nate Pease, playing Cobbley, defeated Ryan Miller, who was the mono red player in the top eight. And Edgar Flores defeated uh, Chris Pillett, who is uh, also a Cobbley player. Uh, this is the final match of the top eight. So AJ has on three lands, two Mystics. I think this player right here is maybe just both attack on the Ajace. Mm -hmm. I mean, AJ has a good hand. He has seven cards in his hand. So uh, this game is still pretty early. Oh yeah, this game is definitely live. <laughs> So Christian is uh, pondering on what to do. I think it might actually go chump, chump, then finish off one of the Stoneforge Mystics with the, uh, the Mortar Pot token. I don't hate that play at all. What's that? I said I don't hate that play at all. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely fine play. Clear, clear the board. You should be left with the Jace. And uh, you also have a Tech Edge and, you know, a full grip. Yeah, you, you know, you have a mana advantage. You have a Planeswalker in play. Yeah. There's no way AJ's going to play something that trumps Jace's turn. It's yeah, you know, all, all we DJ with is just a, a Capstone Forge, so. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, AJ can't really play his own Jason to Christian right now, because Christian is representing Spell Pierce. Yeah. Even then, he just untaps and plays Big Jace, maybe. Like, yeah. Is, is it having this advantage in the Jace War this early in the turn is, is pretty huge. Like, it's not really mitigated like later in the game when people are coming over the top with Titans or Gideons or whatnot. Alright, so AJ decides to uh, bite the bullet and just play his own Jace. Here's Christian's Jace set a high enough number of counters where uh, the value's there. She goes ahead and casts Spell Pierce. Now this looks really good for Christian at this point. Yeah, like that last turn of events was uh, about as good as it gets. And uh, other good news for Christian is that he's actually hitting his land drops consistently. That's uh, something often you see people with these like really good starts, and then like they miss a couple land drops, and that like gives their opponent an opportunity to get back in. But uh, it looks like this game is kind of like a runaway game for Christian at this point. It may take a little while, but. He's probably going to win. Yeah. <laughs> so I was talking to Christian earlier about his uh, eight long decks. He's playing four and three tech edges, which is well, seems pretty different from most of the other lists. Um, but he swears by it, so. Yeah, the uh, the high number of Inkmon Nexus is uh, pretty unique. Yeah. From watching games today with uh, Cobblade, though, it's a card I haven't seen much of prior to this weekend. Uh, I, you know, I'd heard about it. I'd seen it played in other decks, like in decks in Dallas and decks in Boston. But uh, since I've covered, I haven't really seen. It. I hadn't seen it, and uh, finally getting to see it in action, it's just really powerful. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. I think it started showing up on Moto a little before Dallas, and I, don't know, I played against Raptor. Um, there he was playing it. Trying to have a trophy against Moto would be lovely. And then I get a cookie from Glenn. All right, so uh, AJ is going to uh, cast a Gideon and uh, see if Christian has another spell appearance. It does not look like he does, so yeah. that's pretty good. That's a very fortunate round. I mean, AJ is certainly going to attack here. The stone forge mystic. No, I mean the uh, the other guys uh, want to. So it would just trade. Oh, you're right. Yeah, the mortar pod gives yeah, plus zero yeah, plus yeah, one. Yeah, so. yeah, nothing would happen. Yeah, so. yeah. Of course it does. All right. So looks like Christian's probably gonna hit his six land drop. As long as he, has, yeah, he's got ink moth in his hand. This is a draw card first. Oh wow, draws a stone forge mystic. This is really good news for him. Yeah, I think he actually. Uh, now he can just play Stoneforge. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I you know, think he can play Stoneforge. Sword. Yeah. His hand's loaded. Is that double Stoneforge? He has counter spells and stuff too. Yeah, he, yeah. Christian's hand's really good. I mean, AJ's hand's really good, and his board president is good as well. So, all right, one uh, one point off the Gideon. And uh, I think he's gonna play Stoneforge. Yeah. I would play Stone Forge. <laughs> yeah, so Christian plays a Stone Forge. He'll probably go get a Feast and Famine right now. That seems to make the most sense. He, uh, does he have, what, what does he have access to? Yeah, he's asking, I, I think it's just two Feast and Famines and a Mortar Pod. Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> But the Feast of Famine makes a, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> there aren't many other options. Actually, one of my opponents uh, today played a uh, Stone Forge Mystic to go find his sword, only to discover it was in his sideboard, and this was in uh, game one. <laughs> so that was unfortunate for him. Sometimes you misregister your deck. Yep. It's happened to uh, but the he best did, and worst of us. He did win the match, though, so... <laughs> That was your only loss of the day? Yeah, effectively 3 0 ing me. Alright, so Christian passes the turn. Uh, looks pretty good for, for AJ if he could do something good this turn. He could uh, take out the Hawk with the Gideon, or he could pump up Gideon. I'm not sure what, uh, what route he's going to go. But it looks like uh, AJ's got enough lands to do whatever he wants. I mean, I think Christian actually is double mana leak, though. Which um, does make this turn a little more difficult. Yeah. It's a very interactive matchup, the Godblade Mirror. And uh, as a result, it tends to take quite a while. <laughs> One of the main reasons I'm actually not playing Godblade. <laughs> I've... Uh, Played many Cobblade Mirrors at uh, a best friend's house, and uh, you know, playing the Cobblade Mirror is something you do like while you're watching TV, <laughs> and like you know, a match like takes a movie. <laughs> if you really think everything through. Uh, Archer's back on Netflix, so uh, <laughs> kill some time. <laughs> AJ uh, lands a tumble magnet. That's going to uh, greatly neuter uh, Christian's ability to uh, successfully sword. Gonna go for a mana leak. But uh, you know, this mana leak, I think uh, AJ's just gonna pay. It's, uh, it's a free card at this point, which is pretty relevant. And uh, he probably assumes his opponent doesn't have a second one, and uh, it looks like Christian does not, in fact, have a second mana leak. Jace is on one here, so I think Christian has a big Jace in hand, so he's the option of, of resolving that. Yeah, he can uh, trade in his Jace, which appears to be what he's doing. Seems like a pretty good deal. Yeah. Upgrade. Now, uh, you don't really get many opportunities to do things like that, so, you know, an opponent being tapped out in a Callblade Mirror is a pretty nice chance to, uh, you know, 
stick a Mind Sculptor and have blockers back to protect him. Of course, uh, it's dangerous because Tumble Magnet can actually effectively take out two blockers when you need to. Yeah. To uh, get in pot shots at a Planeswalker. That's another reason why it's good in this matchup because it's really hard to like wade your way through all the chump blockers and uh, Tumble Magnet's like some way to actually like peck away at your opponent's chase. Yeah. If we're getting out of hand in the mirror. So it might end up being a little difficult for Christian to protect his chase since uh, AJ has resolved the Gideon. You know, uh, it does have the, the Hawks and Snowforge in hand, I'm not sure. You know, especially with the uh, Tall Magnet, AJ is uh, for sure going to get to uh, tap whatever creature, whatever cre that creature that Christian plays uh, in his second oh, main yeah. phase. Jason, or Gideon was plus two as well, so... So the, uh, the Gideon will be able to uh, take out that Jace. Perhaps a Sword and Stone Forge Mystic will take out the Jace, and Gideon will do some other fun thing. Alright. Um, Christian decides to go ahead and uh, brainstorm on his Jace. Uh, he draws three lands, including an Inkmon Nysis. Is probably just going to play a hawk here, perhaps a Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, he could even play a third land and uh, go ahead and put a sort of piece of famine down. <laughs> I want to tag my buddy Gerard in here. All right, Orrin, thank you for stopping by. Good luck tomorrow. All right, thank you. Have very fun much. tonight. Absolutely. I'm starving. All right, yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> Get something to eat. All right. And uh, we'll see you bright and early. So, my prediction is that this match is going to take another five minutes. So then. We could all go get something to eat. Um, so Christian's uh, pondering, and uh, he plays a Stoneforge Mystic and gets a Feast and Famine. He's going to shuffle up and pass the turn. And now that's uh, two sort of Feast and Famines for Christian. Yeah, I mean, I think this game looks pretty good for, for AJ, to be honest, even though it's Christian thinks he's winning, but that Gideon's going to do a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, Gideon can completely dominate a game when you yeah. need it to. So I think I, I think pretty much uh, we want AJ to uh, to untap. Uh, he might use Tumble Magnet at the end of the turn. Yeah, I think I would to put down that Mystic. That way you get a you know a free chance to just take that Mind Sculptor out. Yeah, especially uh, he could go Sword of Feast and Famine. So what yeah, AJ knows? AJ knows. AJ's gonna go tap your your Stoneforge Mystic, untap, play a Sword of Feast and Famine. The Feast and Famine is gonna go after Christian. He's gonna discard a card. But Gideon is gonna go after the Jace. Kill the Jace. He's gonna untap everything. Yep. He's gonna play his own Jace, and uh, the game's gonna be shifted. Yep. So It's basically gonna be locked up. Yep. AJ is going to the top four, and I know this just by this look on AJ, AJ's face. Yeah. Yeah. Look how excited he is. He's bursting at the seams. All right, here it comes. AJ, don't disappoint. All right, AJ draws the planes. Now. uh going to go ahead and uh, cast this sword. Yep. Then he's going to get to equip it to the Stoneforge Mystic. Then he's going to turn Gideon into a creature. Oh, yeah, it plays a hawk. Wow. This is this is a really good turn for AJ. Yeah. <laughs> yep. AJ knows. He says, oh yeah, I like Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. You know, that is uh, the second player we've seen today who had a uh, Dr. Pepper shirt. He's actually competing with whoever the first player was. To, be, to get yeah. the Dr. Pepper sponsorship. Yeah, I think it was Louis Laskin. Yeah, I mean, I think the Dr. Pepper sponsorship is like the most coveted thing it in is, yeah. all of uh, competitive magic, so it's never been achieved before. All right, so there goes Jace. There goes AJ's lands untapped. And there goes a planes from Christian. Right. And I think AJ should just drop like two more Hawks. Yeah, you could just or, jam the board. Or, or just go Jace, Hawk, have the condemn open. I think, I think that's the play. play. Jace, Hawk, leave open to them. Yeah, I mean, like, Christian's board went from, like, looking <laughs> awesome to, like, nothing. Hey, Gideon, uh, if used properly, especially in combination with that Tumble Magnet, yep. it, uh, it really let AJ, like, get through that whole army that Christian had and, uh, you know, kill the Jace to yep. let himself get the card advantage he needed. So this, this is what happens in the matchup. You know, one person looks like they're winning, then... Somebody has a big turn, and it's, you know, the game shifted. 
Yeah. Um, AJ uses his Squadron Hawk with the Jace Brainstorm ability. This is uh, something that savvy players use to uh, get anc Ancestral Recall, like card advantage. Uh, what you do is you cast a Squadron Hawk, and uh, you search your library for your... Well, you, uh, you use your Jace Brainstorm ability, and you put Squadron Hawks back on the top of your library, and then you cast a Squadron Hawk, and those Squadron Hawks come right back to your hand. So instead of having to put two cards back, you just get to draw three cards when you use the Jace ability. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a great play, and that's why a Hawk and Jace the Mind Sculptor are in a deck together. So. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why Squadron Hawk is so powerful in general. That's why I'm often surprised to see it in green white list or white red list. It's still a strong card, but uh, I think the reason it broke into Constructed is because of its strength of Jace. Yeah, I mean, the other decks play for, uh, you know, equipment reasons and, and whatnot. All right, I, I mean, I don't know what Christian's going to do to... Like, he doesn't. He, yeah, see, he he knows he. Yeah, you know, he so. he's not happy about the current state of affairs. Yeah. So Christian's gonna. I mean, this is pretty much Christian's last turn to uh, to do anything relevant, and then the game is just gonna be completely dominated by AJ. But uh, definitely, uh, we had a lot of fun matches today. We saw Orrin Beasley with his Rug deck. We saw a Black Red Vampire deck. There's a Mono Red deck in late May Top Eight. Uh, just a bunch of different decks. So, so that was good. And now we have uh, AJ using the Tumble Magnet, which is kind of an interesting thing to happen. Um, oftentimes, you want to save those Tumble Magnet charge counters for uh, sorted creatures. At this point, AJ probably thinks that you know the game is locked up to such an extent that it just doesn't. I think the Tumble Magnet was used from the previous turn when he tapped the guy to get in with... No, oh, no, uh, no, 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 no that was done yeah, during yeah, yeah. Christian's end step, the turn yeah. before. Um, Christian's going to serve a bunch of guys, um, perhaps trying to infect AJ to death. No, the, I mean, if he doesn't have Dave Judgment in his hand, even if he does, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, I mean, AJ just has such an incredible presence on the board right now. It just seems, it seems really, really hard for Christian. Christian is uh, going to put that Jace down to... Uh, was he able to kill the Jace now? With the, uh, he has to use Mortar Pot activations, but uh, it's going to be a lot of work. But it might be worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, regardless, he's not going to win with Jason play, and he's it's just it's just really bad for this right here. There goes the good them. Yeah. And uh, now, uh, now he can't kill a Jason even if he wanted to. I guess he could. He could wrath himself to kill it. Yeah, <laughs> and tap out, <laughs> tap yeah. all of his lands and wrath himself to kill the chase. I, That's about it at this I, point. I think AJ wins in two turns. That seems like a uh, reasonable estimate to me. Yeah. I saw the arm go across the table, and I thought uh, <laughs> Christian just scooped. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, Christian's definitely not in uh, scoop mode yet. I think he's he's definitely gonna at least play a chase of his own or something like that. See, here he is. Losing an over an hour match. Yeah. And this, uh, this match smile is a on long his face. Match. I, think, I think AJ's really, really happy that he's going to win 2 0. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I don't think he. I don't think he wants to sit there and play. I mean, uh, I, I don't even know. see what happens here, though. I mean, Christian can still get back in this. He, he definitely has. Uh, you know, a lot of cards in his hand, and the problem is that, you know, he's going to need to tap out for Jace to get back into the game, and in doing so, he's going to give AJ an opportunity to just untap all of his lands and have his way with him, with including an equipped sorted creature. So, just seems pretty bad at this point. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't even think Christian knows what's what <laughs> what he's what, doing right yeah. now. Yeah, he's just. I'll just. I'll hope for the best. Yeah. All right, there's Jace. Yeah, so Jace trades. Jace, Jace trades. AJ's gonna untap, tap the hawk, hit in for nine damage. Yeah. Untap, like it's just. Yeah, actually, he's gonna swing with Colony too. He's yeah. just gonna deal him thirteen damage this turn. Uh huh. Yeah, he'll bring up to six. That's what I would do. Well, uh, well, it looks like he's got something else going on. Water pod. Okay, yeah. If he has a land, he could activate the Colony. Which he does have a land. Yeah, he does, in fact, have a tech edge. Yeah. So. Alright, so Christian's gonna go out to six life, and he's gonna be left with just two guys. Yeah, and uh. And AJ's yeah, still gonna have the Tome Magnet untapped. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, thank you, Colony, for, you know, turning into a 4 for flyer. That's what yes. AJ's thinking right now. <laughs> yeah. It's like, nice Sarah Angel coming at you. It's uh, it's interesting just how good the new Manlands were, the World Bike Manlands. You know, they're cards that uh, I think kind of like took a little while to catch on. I was so surprised people weren't just putting four for every deck where they fit prior yeah. to oh, uh, definitely, you know, yeah. about three months after that set came out. All right, now Christian's probably going to bash down to uh, six here. Yeah, he's going on and to six. Then, uh, he's going to Tech Edge his Colony. Or uh, he's gonna tech edge Christian's tech edge in combat, and then AJ's gonna play another colony, I believe. Yeah, kill the tech edge. That's the right play. Yeah, I think he's almost certainly gonna do that. He, you know, he has another colony. Uh, but if you kill the tech edge, you're just leaning on him way too hard for him to do anything. Yeah, I mean it's just yeah, yeah. Tech edge, yep. I think he's gonna play two hawks and just pass the turn. Oh, tumble magnet. <laughs> yeah, this. I mean, yeah. He closed it. Yeah, I'm surprised Christian didn't scoop yet. I mean, it is the top eight of an event. Yeah, I mean, that's even. Yeah, uh, yeah he does. <laughs> there right, you yeah. go. <laughs> All right. AJ Soccer takes it down. He gets to the top four. He's in top four, so it's a good top four. Edgar Flores, AJ Soccer. Both those guys are, are gun gunning for level 8. And Nate Peace. Warren Beasley and Nate Peace. So it's a good top 8.